Hi, and welcome to Seneca Hall. I'm Lydia, a current WVU student, and I'm hoping to teach you as much as I possibly can about Seneca Hall in this video. Quick disclaimer, I lived in Seneca Hall during 2020 and 2021, during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, so just keep that in mind when you're watching this video because things are always subject to change in the future. One of the most convenient things about living in Seneca Hall is that there is a garage on 3rd Street underneath the building. To get to the garage, you can simply drive up 3rd Street or you can go down 3rd Street if you're coming from Evansdale. This is definitely where you should park on move-in day. All the way at the end of the garage in these glass windows is the entrance to Seneca Hall. If you're moving in, you can go from the garage on floor 2 to floor 3, which is the lobby. The lobby is where you can get your keys and information about move-in. Don't forget to say hi to Liz! In the lobby, there will also be some red carts for moving in. Take the cart on the elevator back down to the second floor where the garage is and load your stuff in your cart. There's me with my cart saying hello. Put all your things in a red cart, take it to your room, and return the cart to floor three when you're done. When you get to your room, you can identify which one is yours by the letter on the door. Every room has a window and blinds, but if you're lucky, you can get the double window. Every room also has a desk with two drawers and a desk chair. The desk chair has two arms, but you can remove them if they don't fit under your desk. If you put your desk next to your bed, it can also double as a nightstand. Some of the beds are adjustable so you can change their height, but I also chose to bring risers as well. Every bedroom has a closet with an area to hang your clothes and also extra storage space at the bottom. I chose to put a shoe rack here. The windows have special protectors so that you can only open them a couple inches. Side note, if you take the guards off the windows, you can get in trouble for that, so I would not recommend doing that. The lights in the rooms aren't the best, so I would recommend bringing another lamp. The air vents tend to be placed over the desk or the bed, so definitely bring a vent cover if you have one, but if you don't, I just made one out of a magnetic photo cover. These door hangers are the best, so please bring one. If you have allergies, I would recommend bringing an air purifier as well. I also chose to bring my own blackout curtains and a tension rod, which is probably a good idea if your bed is next to your window. If you need a little extra space, bring a hutch if you have one for your desk. Before I came to Morgantown, I printed out my schedule for the semester so I could tape it to my desk when I got here. Make sure you stay for the end of the video because I'm going to give you some more tips and tricks about how to find your classes. Every room has a trash can and a set of two dressers and they each have two drawers in them. You can also choose to stack them if you want or put them under your bed and I brought extra storage containers for above them, which saved me a lot of space. Unlike other dorms, you don't have to pay extra for the microwave and fridge in your room. The stove and oven actually comes in really handy when you want to make something to eat. And also under the oven is a little storage compartment for you to put your pots and pans, which saved a lot of extra space. And as a college student, the stove is great for making mac and cheese. The kitchen sinks are pretty nice, but don't forget to bring hand and dish soap for the kitchen, as well as any cleaning supplies you might need. Also bring a dish drying rack and anything you might need to wash dishes. There's a pretty good amount of storage in the kitchen, as well as a full fridge, which is pretty nice, not gonna lie. If you need even more room, some of the ottomans have extra storage space as well. Definitely bring one of these water filter things because the water in Morgantown is kind of gross. We always ran out of bag clips, so probably bring some of those too. Here's the hallway that connects all of the rooms. There's a sink in this hallway as well. There's me at the sink, what's up? And under the sink, as you can see, we had storage, which ended up being a very good idea. Helpful tip, bring your own vacuum. The order of the bedrooms in each room varies, but in my room, I had letter C, so I had this nice little hallway where I could store my shoes. In the bathroom, there are two showers, and they both come with a black and white shower curtain, but you have to bring a clear plastic shower curtain for the inside. There is also one sink in this room. You should probably bring one of these hangy basket shower things. I don't know what they're called, but yeah, bring one of those. In the abnormally large toilet room, we just had a toilet and we brought a shelving unit which saved a lot of space in the long run. Shout out to my roommates for that. 
Every floor in Seneca Hall has a laundry room with three washers and three dryers. You have to bring your own laundry detergent as well as dryer sheets and anything else you might need to wash your clothes. Online, you can put money on your ID card that you can use to pay for laundry, which is called Mountie Bounty. It is $3 total to wash and dry your clothes and you can either pay with Mountie Bounty or with quarters. In my opinion, Mountie Bunny is the way to go though because there is an app that can even tell you when your laundry is done. This app is called Mobile ID and you should download it anyway because some professors use it to take attendance in class. This app can also be used if you forget your ID but you have your phone with you. Each time you wash and dry your clothes, you need to use this machine to pay for it unless you have quarters. If you have quarters, you can pay here but if not, you're going to have to note the number on the washer that's open. Go to the machine and swipe your ID and type in the machine number. Sometimes you have to type in 000 and then the machine number. I don't know, sometimes it doesn't work if you just type in the number, it just depends. It's weird sometimes. It'll tell you the amount, press okay. Okay balance, press okay again, just keep pressing okay, that's what I did. It got really annoying, but just keep pressing okay. There you go. Some of the washers are different, so you either put your detergent in this compartment or you can just put it directly into the washer, so pay attention. Then press your temperature that you want to wash or dry your clothes at and press start and you should be done. Hey guys, this is future Lydia editing this video and I'm realizing that I forgot to include what you have to do if you need to get a package. The video after this is only about if you have to get a letter. So if you want to get a package, all you have to do is take your ID to the front desk and they should give you your package and then you should be done. But if you have a letter, go to the front desk, leave your ID, and they should give you a key with your room number on it. Walk over by the elevators and take a right, and you should see a mailbox with your room number on it. Take your key and unlock your mailbox. I did it the wrong way, oops, I can't use a key, right, apparently. Get your letter, lock your mailbox, and take the key back to the front desk. Give them your key and they'll give you back your ID. <laughs> that rhymed. If you have outgoing mail, put it in the outgoing mailbox, but I probably didn't need to tell you that. Every floor has a trash room, so to take out your trash, just take it down the hallway until you see the room that says trash room. It's kind of nasty in there to be honest, so just hold your breath. There is one chute for recycling and one for trash, so whichever one you want to use, press the button with one hand and twist the knob at the bottom with the other. In 2021, the market came to you place. The market, as well as a Starbucks, is on floor two of Seneca Hall. The market has groceries and other necessities. You can even pay with your ID and use your dining dollars. At the end of the semester, you can spend your extra dining dollars here if you need to. People of the future, please tell me, does this soft serve machine ever actually work? Here are some random things that might make your time at Seneca Hall a little easier. The RAs are always in the 10th room of every floor. They post lots of information that could help you out. Walk down these stairs between Seneca and U Place to get to the Summit Dining Hall. Summit is the closest dining hall to Seneca Hall. You can use your meal plan here. This is what the building looks like. There's a printer in the lobby if you need to use it. Insomnia Cookies is right next door. There are many study lounges on every floor of Seneca Hall. Use them to your advantage. There's an extra TV, tables, chairs, couches, etc. in these rooms. The study rooms always have the best views. On every floor, there is one giant study room that is divided into several rooms. If anyone's ever using the bathroom in your room, you can always go down the hall and use the one here. On the fourth floor of Seneca Hall, there is a magical place called the Courtyard. In the Courtyard, you can play cornhole, sit at tables, or just enjoy the view. The only weird thing about the Courtyard is that sometimes you can see in people's rooms. Hey everyone! Everyone has their own individual bedroom key that you can lock your room with that you get when you move in. Okay, so I promised I would help you find your classes. First, you need to print your schedule on Schedule Builder. Make sure you do this before you move in so you don't have to worry about it. This is actually a picture of my schedule from my first semester of freshman year. This is what your schedule should look like. Just make sure it's the one with the different colored boxes. Next, download the app called WVU Mobile. The logo is of the Mountaineer beard. Open the app and press Campus. Then press Map. Type in the building code that is on your schedule and it will give you a map of where the building is. After this, I would recommend typing it into the maps on your phone for walking directions. And that's all I have for you guys. 
I hope I could somehow help you in this video, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I will put my own personal email in the description of this video, so please if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And have a great year at Seneca Hall.